when I found corporate to be almost unbearable, I thought, you know what? I wanted to ask, yes. Yeah. The obvious thing. Why haven't you done this? I mean, it was such an obvious choice. And people kept saying to me, but why don't you join your parents? Why don't yeah. you mm. go, you know, the route that they've gone? <laughs> and yeah, I'm, I went into corporate for nine years and I thought, you know what? This is enough. I want to now go into entrepreneurship. Was the corporate world a test of waters? Were you testing waters? You know what? Um, when I, my, firstly, my parents encouraged me to pursue what I had, um, to, almost like I studied, I, I did a um, business degree in communications and marketing. Yes. So they encouraged me to practice <laughs> what I had studied for. You know, once I graduated, they're like, okay, listen, go into the corporate world, experience it, and then you can decide mm. if this is the route you want to take. Mm. It was also important because it instilled a lot of um, discipline, discipline within me. Mm. The processes and practices that are, mm. um, uh, you know, done in corporate are very different to you how you would work in entrepreneurship. So, would you say that being in corporate has shaped your entrepreneurial persona? It's almost given me a different lens onto how to approach also the business yeah. world. So it does. It gives you a discipline. So. As an entrepreneurship, you tend, one tends to almost make their own rules along the way. Yeah. But having been exposed to a corporate environment, you're almost, um, you know, compelled to follow structure and compelled yes. to do things the way a corporate would do. Mm. Um, and I think one of the other biggest reasons my parents um, encouraged me to go into the corporate world before venturing into entrepreneurship was because they had they had been doing this for years mm. and for them they had seen the ups and the downs and the downs are really rough and they didn't yeah. want me to mm. experience you know the downside they'd seen also um people within corporate excelling and it was almost like okay listen do this um which was good you know you get the security of a corporate corporate setting you get um access to finance you get mm. access to, to resources you know, able to as well do a lot mm. exactly and as an entrepreneurship it sometimes takes a long time before you get to experience some of those luxuries you know mm. before you can almost have like a solid credit record to, to qualify for certain things but mm -hmm. as corporate it gives you that sense of security mm. so it was good to do to in initiate my career within a corporate environment first and then venture into going on my own now obriani was uh shut down it was in four ways actually it was shut down in, yeah mm -hmm. it was shut down in 2012 but you were also involved in uhuru caterers mm -hmm. another business that's uh, that was actually started off by your parents i just want to know you know what other businesses uh, did you get involved in um okay so obriani chic as soon as i left corporate mm. i opened obriani chic but there were three other obrianis um that my parents had started so i went under the umbrella brand obriani because that was a familiar brand it was um, established for years and years and years um, Obriani Sheik was my first baby. Um, Uhuru Caterers was born from Chicken Uhuru. Chicken Uhuru was started by... I Oda love Chicken Uhuru. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, seriously. Chicken, chicken Uhuru. Go so, go. It, it go south, isn't it? Well, uh, I guess so. But Yarona and Ilito so, at Ridgeville. In ah, the yeah, is it? Was it I the green one? one? The green one. Green. Yes, yes, I know. <laughs> I'm like, hey, I'm on. Yeah, I'm in the south. There with the chicken yes, chicken. I swear mm. there is. In the oh. south of, in Soweto. Okay. Yeah, they, there is a Soweto. chicken Uhuru yeah. on some corner somewhere. Look, I'm bad. Wow. You know where it is? Chicken Uhuru at the corner. But DK, yes, garage. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I must look out for it. Next time, I'll go up. I'll look out for it. Okay. Um, But, yeah, so they started that in... Um, the 90s and then Uhuru Keitaras was also born out of it because um, my mom ran a few canteens mm -hmm. at Mines, um, at Denel, the company. So she, we, we, um, it was almost also easy for me to migrate into the catering and eventing space mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from being exposed to it by both of them. Um, other businesses include um, Uhuru Bright House. Mm -hmm. which um, it is on a farm in Hattipias. Um That was also another brainchild really? by myself and my mom. Yeah. Hmm. Um, in Hartis. Two years we ago. love Hartis. <laughs> Just outside of, before Zanadu, close to the mm -hmm. Cecil Garage. Yeah, is it so easily accessible, spot, right? Very, it's on the main road. Very is it near nice. the market? So, yes. Yeah, oh, yeah, so maybe before I see. you get to the market. So if you, if you were to go to the market from Deep Slot, yeah. you'd go down that... Um, Dip. Yeah. The Cecil Garage on yes, the right hand yes, side. Yes, I see it. Uhuru Bry House is on oh the right hand side. Oh my goodness. Oh, so interesting. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So that's on a plot that was owned by my grandfather that he passed on to his daughters and his family. <laughs> sure. So now you are in a totally, totally different industry now. Okay, let's just track back and recap. You are from corporate, mm -hmm. from corporate into retail. Mm -hmm. From retail, um, joining your father, obviously, you went into 
catering events yes. and now you're in solar energy yeah that is insane mm -hmm. please talk us through the